Yeah, when I think of the 90s, I think two names come up, which is Josh Wink. I remember like tunes like Higher State of Consciousness or I Am Ready or um, House the Music, which I still play a lot. So these kind of like big techno rave anthems were just blowing my mind. The other one is Green Velvet, for sure. Like I remember when I played uh, at Trezor first time, uh, Land of the Lost and stuff like that. It was just, um, this guy was, re I was, I really admired him. And um, like people like uh, Mills and Hood, it took me a while to, to really understand it. It was more like the end of the 90s that I really uh, got into that and also into basic channel. But better late than never. <laughs> Well, that was uh, around, I guess, 2002, 2003, like actually right before I started my um, residency at Bergheim, that I felt like um, everything might be lost, kind of. Um, but there was still a part of me, uh, in me, which was not ready to give up. But I felt like the music that I wanted to make or um, where the, the electronic music scene went at that time was just in totally different directions. There was all this kind of electro clash sellout thing and um, the places where I played in Berlin, um, they wanted to hear that stuff and I felt like I couldn't really step on the gas pedal anymore. And um, so I was kind of struggling. I had um, few gigs here and there. I didn't play much out, outside of Berlin and um, I had two different jobs. I worked as a graphic designer then I quit that job. I was also kind of struggling in my personal life but but then everything changed obviously like um, because there was always this island uh, Osgood which was the old Berghain and that's where I used to go. Um, and I felt like, wow, there's hope. There's still some, some people who uh, believe in something different than only this kind of cocky cocaine attitude. And uh, yeah, that kept me going. And then suddenly everything changed and I found my, my own voice in my productions. And yeah, it was a total turning point. Everything was like flowing very easily. We didn't think about success or, or anything. It was just uh, um, I met Marcel and uh, we liked each other and thought, hey, let's do something together, let's try out. And we just met maybe two, three times a week um, playing soccer, PlayStation, and then made a little bit of music. It was really not hard work to do this first Osgood record and there was no, no plan actually to, to make the label. We just came up with two, three tracks, showed it to the, the owner of Berghain and he said, yeah, let's, let's just make a label. And we were really surprised how well it was received and how, yeah, how the gates opened up for us suddenly. I mean, we still had, we had time and we had the freedom to do whatever we wanted and we kind of had our, our own zone because uh, all around the DJs were playing so-called minimal and we just did what we loved. If I have to pick one, um, then it would be the record release party of my album One. When I started my set, like, everyone was coming down from Panorama Bar and there were, uh, there were so many people and I felt like, okay, the people are not just, they, they just happen to be at Berghain, they really come to my record release party and um, I don't know what was different that, that night, but I had the feeling there were more colors and, the whole, and, and, and more emotions in, in the air. And when Elif, uh, who 
was on my album, uh, in two tracks of my album, when she started to sing because we started the set with a little live performance. Um, that was really so, I had goosebumps all over and um, at the end of the set I was so wasted <laughs> and drunk, but it felt awesome. Yeah, Zach, aka DBS1, he really took me by surprise at a time where uh, so many DJs and live acts were just hunched over their laptops and when I saw him perform in Minneapolis, I thought like, what is this, like he, he's so physical, like moving with the music. I was really super like, impressed by that and also that I never heard of him and he seemed like a guy who really has, like he, he knows his shit. He, he's been doing it, uh, that for a long time but he hadn't released anything. But I could hear his influences that it's real proper techno. He's able really to produce tunes with just literally four or five tracks. A bass drum, a chord, some hi-hats, a clap, and that's it. He's able to put so much uh, soul into that and really not a lot of people are able to do that. That's really special. And he's just a really down-to-earth guy. I really like him. I'm happy that he, he's getting so popular now. Yeah, compared to, to all these uh, laptop live shows, he's just so physical, so I want him to play live. Why do I love to play these long sets? I think um, I just need this uh, for to keep my passion alive for that, uh, that it not, not becomes just a job or just performing. Someone uh, said the other day that, that Berghain is like, um, you, you go in there, the energy level goes high and it just stays there. It just stays there forever. I don't know why, but it, it really carries you also as, as a DJ that you find the energy and the power to go all the way. I just go into the zone and just play. And I don't think about it at all anymore. And I don't think of uh, am I hungry or like there are people coming bringing me bananas or stuff like that. I just want to play. And sometimes I feel a bit like in this movie The Wrestler, this tragic character that throws in everything that he has. Like I put in my soul everything and even if the ears are ringing the, the next days and I'm totally exhausted, I, I don't think about anything like that. It's just the show must go on, you know, I, I give it all for you.